He's a consultant, pastor, grandfather, chairman of Florence County Council, and he's on the Boy Scout PDRE Council Board. And he had time to meet with us today. You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina Peace. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the service center for the PD Area Council of the Boy Scouts. We're focused on just that, service, and we're visiting with the Honorable Terry Alexander, the chairman of Florence County Council. Good morning. Good morning. Terry, thanks so much for being with us. And I, and I, I failed to mention you're also the senior pastor of uh, Wayside Chapel Baptist Church. Yes, yes. So we could call you either the Honorable or Reverend, or I think I saw you got your Master's in Divinity yeah. from Howard, so I guess we could call you Doctor. I mean, No, not Doctor, not oh, right. Just, that's right. It's just Reverend. It's okay, it's fine. yes, yeah. Reverend's okay. Yeah. Is Terry okay? Terry's okay as well. well. It's so exciting to think about getting in, and I know you've been with us a couple times, and we were there over at the Civic Center, focused on the Distinguished Citizens Award dinner yeah. last year. Obviously, here another time when we were focused on Reverend Diggs, and I think you were highlighting his amazing service both yes. to uh, both to that church as well as to to scouting. And it's just great to get you in. It's good to be back here and to have you back here and talk about what's going on in scouting and what's going on in the PD area. Absolutely. How long, are, you, are you originally from the area? Florence is my home, born and raised right here in Florence. I went to my clinic in high school here in Florence and. I uh, attended a junior college in North Carolina, then completed my work at Francis Marion. It was Francis Marion College at oh, yeah. that time. Oh, yeah. yeah. When did it become a university? Uh, I think it became a university maybe about less than eight years ago, I Is believe. Is that right? Yeah, it's been in recent years. They, mm -hmm. they changed some legislation in the state, and several um, colleges became universities. Mm -hmm. I think I saw you attended school in Durham, Terry. Yeah, I went My to Durham hometown. Business yeah. College. That's your hometown? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Durham Business College. It was down on Fayetteville Street, down the street from North Carolina Central oh, University. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. definitely. And very popular. Yeah. I, I think that's still in existence. Or well, not the school, but yeah. some, of the, some of the buildings are still being used mm -hmm. by the community. I visited mm -hmm. up there about a year or two ago. And, you know, I had a tour down there, and they're still utilizing some of the, the buildings that the um, junior college once had. Mm -hmm. You have been in the ministry now, or related to, I think I saw you You were there at Reverend Diggs Church as associate pastor for 13 years. About 14 years, yeah, a little over 14 years. And um, prior to that, I was over at the Maxwell Baptist Church, where I grew up for about two or three years. So mm -hmm. I've been in the ministry now. Uh, a little over 19 years, 18 or 19 years. Almost two decades. Oh, man, don't mention it. Yeah, oh, Terry, I'm ah. sorry, that's wrong. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what prompted that initial or the original entrance into the ministry? Well, you know, I don't know if it was a prompting or not. Uh, as I see ministry, it's a calling. It's a calling out of. It's, it's not a job, it's a vocation. And, and you're called out of who you are to, to serve God in that capacity. So as... As so many others who have come before me, um, you know, we struggled with that calling. Well, I struggled with that calling, that hearing, that inner voice that was speaking to me, telling me, pointing me into that direction. I just refused to pick up the telephone when it was <laughs> calling. And then what happened, it, it just got so heavy on you, you know, it just kind of weighed you down knowing that you should be doing something. You're not sure what it is, but you know what you're doing is not where God wanted you to be. And so for years, I kind of ran from that voice, that inner, that inner voice that was speaking to me. And um, it was so interesting. I was working, as a matter of fact, I was working on Nick Theodore's campaign. I was going, working with him for lieutenant governor. And on my way back to Columbia, I just said, hey, you know, let me go ahead and just turn it over to God. And when I decided to accept that calling, you know, to, to, to open that door, mm -hmm. it was like a burden that was lifted. Because I knew that I was running. It was like a sigh of relief when I said, well, here am I, Lord, send me. And it seemed like the weight just flew off. And um, it's been a good thing. It's been a good journey. And Terry, you'd had a relationship with Christ for a long time prior to actually accepting yes. the calling to yes. go into very, the ministry. very active, yeah, because I was involved in my church, superintendent of Sunday school, on the deacon board, taught Sunday school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I did the thing, you know, just that that's something else he wanted me to do. And... Um, I don't regret it. Mm. I don't mm. regret it at all. It's been a good journey. 
I, I know it. It has to be, but it does require that calling and accepting the call. And yeah. I know that. Uh, I wonder, have you ever talked to folks who uh, possibly shared with you they felt they'd had that calling, but like yourself for a number of years hadn't accepted the call? Yeah, I have, have some friends right now who are struggling with that and eventually decided to say, okay, let me go ahead on, Terry, and, and accept my calling. You know, in talking to my pastor prior to that, you know, I said, you know, Doc, I, I think I've been called. He said, son, if you think you've been called, then you haven't been. <laughs> you know, that, that was a shocker, you, you know. And so what happened was I went back and kind of reevaluated that. And I said, well, I hear what you're saying now. You know, I knew I've been called, and that was a different process. And when you know you've been called, and you struggle with it, uh, because you don't want, you feel like you're giving up something by following God, or following, in this instance, following Christ. And you're really not giving up anything. You're, you're, you're gaining more, because you're gaining a newness in who you are, as I see it, and, and, and whose you are. And, and that is uh, the son of a living God. You know, I consider myself that, not in the same sense of Christ, but I am made in his image, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And that's not an easy thing to do because of the responsibilities that, that clergy members have on them and, and how folks begin to zoom in on them. And, it's, and it can be burdensome mm -hmm. because so often we put so much weight on religion and um, and that can be a dangerous thing because mm -hmm. it could throw you off balance in, in, in any form or fashion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Terry, you know, we, we shared before we started this morning, uh, earlier, talking about the chairman of Horry County Council, Liz Gilland, who, who shared with us uh, when we were visiting with her at uh, down in Myrtle Beach about her communicating with God and mm -hmm. talking to God on a regular basis and driving down for that interview that she'd been talking to God and... Uh, What's that like, whether you're in the ministry or some of your uh, parishioners or otherwise? What's that like, communicating with God? What, what talking to God is, is, is so natural to me now because I, I'm understanding and realize that His presence is constantly before me. I, I traveled to, to um, Washington, D.C. to receive my Master's of Divinity degree. I did that for three years every weekend. Wow. So I had the, the, the opportunity to have constant conversations with God, particularly on my way back um, from school, late Saturday nights, early Sunday mornings, and then was there in time for church services. So I had, I had to have some communication with somebody who watched over me as I traveled down, you know, those highways, because they were at nights when I would wake up and say, where am I? Oh, wow. You know, so I knew it was nothing but the presence of God there driving me. So and I understood that presence, and, and I'm understanding more and more of his presence. So it's very easy, because I know he's right here, and, and he's right there for those, of, for those who are trying to find God. And it's just a matter of communicating with him and just having a conversation. As you and I are talking, mm -hmm. I spoke with someone on last evening and said, you know, just what you told me, you tell that to God. He's listening. Mm -hmm. You know, so talking to God is not out of the norm. We may feel strange because mm -hmm. we can't see him as we, as we normally think about communications. But when you're on the telephone, you can't see the person on the line either. Right. But you're just talking. You're yeah. just assuming that they're hearing your voice. And God is even closer than that. Uh, I often say God is closer than hand and feet and nearer than breathing. So how much closer can he get? So it's just a matter of communing with him on a more regular basis. Mm -hmm. And then you can really accept and, 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 and feel his presence in everything that you do say, think, and feel. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's fascinating, Terry. We could talk to you, sit here for 30 minutes talking about scouting. We could talk about Wayside Chapel Baptist Church and Trinity as well as your service there. I sure want to talk to you about your consultancy, the career development consultancy with the uh, South Carolina Occupational I think, Information System, as well as uh, learn a little bit about your family and growing up here in Florence. So let's start with that. You Growing up here in Florence, and you... Always thought, obviously, you said early service in the church that you'd get into that, or did you well, think? Well, no, that? no, man. You know, being a young guy and thought you was all cool and everything, <laughs> serving God wasn't on my <laughs> mind. You know. But you know, but, but my mother and father kept us in church. You know, we were in church on Sunday morning and basically Sunday afternoon, so it wasn't a strange thing to me. But as we often do, we start out in church, get away from it, doing college life, and somehow find your way back. So I grew up in the church, um, all of us, it was six kids, seven of us, well, I had a brother that got killed in Vietnam, but it was mm -hmm. six of us 
and moms made sure that we were in church on Sunday morning. I mean, there was nothing that would take the place of church. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't no question asked, do I have to go? None of those things. This is the rule. You go to church on Sunday morning. I don't care what you did the night before. As long as you're in my house, you're going to church. So I was brought up in the church and um, because of my, my family upbringing. So it's not a strange thing to me, basically. Right, right. Have you passed that same thing on to your children? Yes, yeah. I told them that, you know, don't get up on Sunday morning and ask me, do you have to go? You, you know, I just like ask me, Pop, do I have to go to school on Monday? Right. You know, the answer is, so don't ask me that. Right. <laughs> you know? And it's, 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 been a, it's been a pretty good transition. They understand it. Yeah. 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 Boy, my son now, my daughter, when she was with us, understood but now my son now understands it quite that's well. That's great. Mm -hmm. You and your you and your bride have two. Y'all yeah. yeah. And I think I saw you've got a grandchild. Yeah as well. man, I got a grand. Her name is Tori. She's about twenty months old now. Is jewel. that right? Yeah. I've got a twenty month old. Yeah. yeah that's a great thing. Yeah. It's, it's interesting, you know. They say that you can be better grandparents than parents. <laughs> you know. What's the best part about being a grandfather, Terry? Well, one thing is that you can send the kid home when you get tired of him. <laughs> you know, when you're a parent, you just send him around in the room. Now you can call, hey, come get your baby. <laughs> but we don't have to do that now because she's still kind of youthful. And just being and watching them, you know, it's, it's very interesting and exciting. And kind of pay close attention to how they grow from one degree to the other and how they pick up things and how things are still kind of curious to them. I, that's, that fascinates me, to mm -hmm. see the curiosity in the youthfulness of the children. And because scripturally said, Jesus said, until we become as little children, we cannot enter into the kingdom. And kids are so innocent. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing bothers them. You know, they just go and, even my son, he just go and turn on the lights, don't even think about how to get there. Right. You know, so when you see a little kid, my little grand is playing all around and just picking up stuff and observing it. That's quite fascinating to me. Yeah, say that scripture piece again. We have to get like children before. Say that you, again. You know, the, script, the scripture talks about, you know, in order for us to get into the kingdom, that we must become as little become children. As little children. Innocence in, in, our, in our sense of serving him. Mm -hmm. Innocence in the fact that we have no worries. Mm -hmm. You know, my little grand doesn't worry about yeah. anything. Yeah. We do. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, we get up in one, gosh, I got to do ABC today. They just get up and go about their little business. That's, That's the innocency, I think, that Jesus is talking about in the scriptures. That's a great point, Terry. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. I think I saw that you and your wife also have a state farm insurance yeah, agency. Yeah, and she's coming up to about 20 years, I believe. We was talking about that. About 20 years. 20 years. She's been an agent and here in Florence, and it's going quite well. Mm -hmm. Always looking for more business. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is a non commercial <laughs> Yeah, non commercial. <laughs> <laughs> what prompted her to get into that? Well, it was interesting. Uh, back in back during the day, and I was working with Congressman Talon and a, and a gentleman, Mr. Billy Campbell, and I thank him very much. He was an agency director at the time. He said, Terry, we're looking for, you know, just we, at that time, we're just trying to find blacks to go into State Farm. And I said, you are? He said, yeah, you know anybody? I said, yeah, I know someone, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so that just started the process that she's going into it. So um, she's been there. Matter of fact, she's been the only black agent for years before they started bringing other black agents in the area here, basically. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And insurance is... is thing that everyone needs. I mean, right, everyone right. Needs but insurance. it's gotten so competitive now um, because of other insurances and and because now there's multi-marketing type things. So it's, it's it's becoming very, very competitive. And that's good for the consumer, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that you can pick and choose now, basically. Mm -hmm. Very definitely. Let's talk a little bit about the career development consultancy. Can you share with me? Well, I, I, I do consulting work for a division in the Employment Security Commission called SCOES. SCOES stands for the South Carolina Occupation Information System. Okay. What we do is provide career information to colleges, high schools, middle schools throughout the state. As a matter of fact, I service this area of the state. Um, we're in about 95% of all high schools in the state, about 90% mm. of all middle schools in the state. And, and what it is really is like a career information system. It assists, assists students in looking at various careers, what they, what, they, what they need to do in order to pursue certain careers, what courses they need to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. You know, the ABCs of making career choices. Because what we are finding out that the more information that students have, the better their choices are going to be. Yeah. Not that they're going to have a right choice. There is no quote-unquote right choices. 
but they are better choices and we try to provide them information to help them make better choices mm -hmm. in them. Golly, Terry, how do you find the time to do all this? Because how large is that area? I, I work in about 15 counties. Oh, come on. Yeah, Ori County is one of my counties that is I that service. Right? Yeah. All of the high schools in Ori County um, have scores. All of the high schools in Florence County as well has scores. In their guidance office, in their career development center, or their student services, however, each one of the schools would, would term that particular um, mm -hmm. office there. If a viewer wasn't familiar with that at their high school or with, within their community, what would be the best way for them to find out a little bit about it? Well, we're also located in every one-stop shop, local employment security commission in the state. We are housed in, in the, the vocational rehab offices. We are in some technical schools. Uh, and if they needed some information or uh, some inquiry, they could go to their contact their local guidance counselor. Okay. And and there are some there is a program that we're offering now, it's called scores.net, where where and it's offered in Ori County and in Florence County where parents can have access to this information at home as well. Mm -hmm. At one point it was basically at one point it was basically confined to the schools. But what we've done over the course of the years made it available over the internet. And uh, now students are give given a password at school, and they can have access to it mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. So that's www.scois.net. Yeah, but you can't get on it unless you have a password from the school. Okay. Parents with kids in Ori County and Florence County could have access to it, providing that guidance counselor or that career counselor give them that password. Mm -hmm. But the average person can't just go and get on to it. I think, golly, Terry, which, and there's so many things, as I said, we could segue into. You have served, and I, the fascinating thing is to think about 13 years of service, Florence uh, County Council District 3, and now serving as chairman yes. of Florence County Council. That's a big deal. What's that all about? Well, I, I enjoyed it, and one thing I often say that even, I, I, even though I, I do these interviews and get on TV on behalf of County Council, I... Um, I feel much stronger when I'm standing behind the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And what I've concluded and what I am concluding in a, in a real sense is that my involvement in politics, I think, to some degree enhances my ministry mm -hmm. uh, because pastoring and ministering in my short period of time of pastoring is basically service, you know, and helping your parishioners and helping those who are in need. And my involvement in politics have allowed me, have given me the opportunity to help folks and know where to go and get that help mm -hmm. for your parishioners and for members of the community. Mm -hmm. So the politics really has enhanced um, my, my, my ministry in, in, in that regard in terms of serving the people. But I enjoy, I enjoy being on county council and make, trying to make a difference in the lives. Sometimes we have controversial issues. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but a friend of mine told me, and Terry, that any decision that you make, regardless of how good it is, going to offend someone. Mm -hmm. He said, so be, a mind, so be mindful of that. And I've kind of kept that with me, remembering that whatever decision I make, somebody's not going to like it. That's right. That's you know, right. so you try to make the one that you make the decision that you think is best for the total community. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes it can get kind of, kind of, um, kind of interesting because you have seen it one way and other folks are seeing it from a different perspective. Right, right. So it's, it's interesting. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. And a councilman has to be able to count. They have to know that it's not their vote alone that's going to right. pass something. You have right. to have a majority. That's right, and that's the deal. You know, we often tell some of my colleagues, you know, I don't care how good your, 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 your position. Position, position is, if you don't have five votes, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's just how it is. Right. But uh, along that same line, let me let me plug our new Florence County Library. Oh yeah, please. That's coming up. We are we are building like a sixteen million dollar library. Sixteen million. It is fantastic. We are told that it's one of the best in the southeast, not southeast of South Carolina, mm -hmm. but the southeast region. And, mm -hmm. and we like to thank the Bruce and Lee Foundations for giving us like ten point six million dollars. To build the library, it is on Irby Street. Uh, okay. Fantastic building. We are having our grand opening on on June the sixth. The, the Honorable Governor Mark Sanford is going to be our speaker for right. our ribbon cutting. Um, we're leaving. We're going from like twenty-eight thousand square feet to eighty-eight thousand square right. 
Foot Library. Is that June 6th event? June 6th. So open to the public? Open to the public at 5.30. We're having our ribbon cutting. Okay. Fantastic library. Yeah, that's on a Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. yeah. And we thought about it. Well, we can't have it on... The only reason why we have it on Sunday is because that's the only time the governor is available. Right. And we thought about what else you do on a Sunday evening. Yeah. Kind of lounge around. And, and so we just decided, well, let's do this on a Sunday evening. Instead of going to the Sunday house and to the park, come to the library and tour. It is fantastic. That is Folks true. will be impressed. The structure of it is, is very good. It has an ancient structure. You have columns on this building. And, right. And on that evening, we're going to have a, a PowerPoint presentation going on. talks about how the building was put together and, and the stones that we had brought in here and talked about the columns. And it's going to be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. There is so much happening on June 6th. It's amazing. Tomorrow, Todd Gray with Festival Jubilates with us, an event going on right. in Hartsville. And, of course, at the beach, it's sun fun. And oh. It's, it's amazing. That's a big day. Oh, but it's enough for to the them Exactly. All. There's yeah. a million folks so here. How are you going to cover all of them? Well, obviously, you're promoting one of them, and Todd <laughs> will promote something else tomorrow. Okay. And, uh, it's, it's very exciting just to think about yeah. all the activities yeah, going on within the PD and all, along the Strand. And when you think of that, Terry, in itself, this position as chairman of county council, that's almost a full-time job. Well, yes and no. Um, we have a county administrator type who, who handles the day-to-day -day operation. And, and Joe King, he is that full-time person. Um, mm -hmm. We basically set the policies and procedures on county council, you know, but the, 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 the overall operations of county government is basically governed and, and, and given to the responsibilities of our staff here mm -hmm. in France, who are doing mm -hmm. a fantastic job of bringing us around and moving us and, you know, into the 21st century, mm -hmm. I would think. And how many council men and women are there? There's nine of us, and we're in nine individual districts. Wow. And so the chairman serves both as the role representing District 3 yeah. as well as the entire, entire body. county. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's quite interesting. Mm. Are you elected by your peers? Or yeah, by? By, I'm elected by the peer, your peers here on county council okay. in Florence. Right, in Florence. Yeah, sure. you were elected as chairman, and you, we serve for one year, <coughs> and then this. By half a chance, they want to give you another term. Yeah, now yeah. you've had the chairmanship for a while. Well, well, I had it the year before last and lost it, and I got it back this year. That's so it's fascinating. Interesting. Yeah, I think when you were with us in 02, yeah, you were, you were yeah. with us as chairman. And it's kind of hard to get things done within one year. Mm -hmm. You know, you have your little plan of action laid out, and, and before you know it, it's January again. Mm -hmm. and here you are having to give those up because folks come in with different philosophical views of how business ought to be run. And, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. What are a couple of the, uh, we got about four minutes, Jerry, what, what are a couple of the biggest challenges facing the county going forward over the next... Well, I uh, think I think our, our biggest biggest challenge right now is basically determining are we going to be the leaders in the PD area? Mm -hmm. Are we going to take bold steps that's going to make a difference in the PD area? Mm -hmm. Are we going to position ourselves technologically so that we can be the, the hub of the PD. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's our challenge, getting our council members to see that, you know, folk are le looking to Florence for leadership. Oh, yeah. You know, Ori County, they're doing their thing. They have their stuff in place, basically. We are trying to find our place. And um, so I think that what we need to do over the next couple of years, the next couple of months, start looking at a strategic plan for Florence. Where do we want Florence to be? And not only where we want Florence to be, but how are we going to get there? Mm -hmm. And we, there have been some discussion relative to that. So our biggest problem is trying to define where we want to go and how we get to that point where we want to get to. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be interesting because you're talking about changing mindsets of individuals, oh, yeah. and that's not an easy thing to do. One of the big things that Florence County has that uh, other, many other counties do not have is interstate access, where you all have 20 and 95. Alan, who was with us, on, Alan Clemens, on Monday, mm -hmm. talked a lot about I-73 and the push to get I-73 for the state. That'll have a big impact yeah. on the entire PD. Right, and not only, yeah, and also I-95. We're looking at those, that, those call years because it's, they're so undeveloped. Oh, yeah. So, therefore, we're going to have to do a lot of things that that's going to require both federal help and state help to, to ensure that we have the infrastructure in place so that we can con continue to grow those areas that are just lining up with nothing that's going on. So we're looking at putting together a process that's going to help us along the way there. We do have two major, two major interstates going north and south and east and west. Right. 
you, you know, and so we need to maximize those those interstates and, and make them work for the PD. Terry, we got a little more than a minute. We're here at the service center for the PD Area Council, the Boy Scouts. You think of the impact scouting's had on your life and the impact that it's had on so many of the youth throughout the PD. What's been the greatest uh, sense of um, fulfillment for you of your activity with the Boy Scouts? Well, just seeing the young, just seeing the young boys involved, just seeing them active, just seeing them take a part of teamwork and working together on particular projects. Uh, and, and having the discipline to work together. We talk about how our kids are, as I told a group the other day, that you know we have more good kids than we have bad kids. And I think we need to emphasize that and, and show them the importance of working together as a team. And that's what scouting does for you, and that's what it did for me. Mm -hmm. Gave me that ability to work with others, even though we may have different opinions, but we have one goal, and we kind of set aside our, our opinions, if you will, and find the best process to obtain that goal, and that's what scouting does. It kind of gives you that chance to throw out different points of views and, and work towards that single goal. Terry, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with the Honorable Terry Alexander coming up next. Whether he's helping parishioners as the Reverend Terry Alexander, or he's helping citizens as the Honorable Terry Alexander representing District 3, if you sat here the last 30 minutes, you'd see that service is both his hobby and his life. He's committed to doing just that. 